I'm going to make a PDF of this at the end and send it to you. We're also recording the screen so you can go back and look at uh, the, the, the lesson if you want later on. And uh, just kind of based on what we do today, I'll have a better sense of where you are as a math student. So um, have you ever purchased like a test prep book or have you done anything like that to help with, uh, with the exam? Uh, no, I have not. You have not. Okay. Uh, and I understand you play basketball. Is that right? Yeah, I do. All right. And are you uh, looking at schools uh, already? Is that, that kind of already happening? For college um yes they're kind of looking at me i haven't really gone out too many got it got it okay well let's just jump right into some math here so here here's a question uh this is actually the question of the week that i post on my website have you seen this question have you gone to the website it's okay if you haven't but if not we'll look at it here yeah, and uh, take that as a no so do you have some pencil and paper out uh, yes i do okay um, I'd like you to try working through this problem. I'll give you like 60 seconds here. And I just, just, you can just say, Hey, you know, I got an answer. I don't have an answer. I have no idea where to start. Um, but I'd like to just have you try, uh, try this problem for me. So, um, take about, take about 60 seconds here and, uh, I'll check back with you in about a minute. All right, how are you doing on this question? I'm almost finished, <laughs> sorry. No problem, I, I'm rushing here a little bit, but I just take, take a little bit more time and uh, let me know when you've got an answer for me, please. I'm guessing B. Okay. Well, we don't we don't want to guess. I mean, you do want to put down an answer here. Um, tell me what you did. Did you put the value of k into the into the equation, or did you do something else? I, I put the value of k into the equation. And okay. And so the, okay, got it. So that that's kind of the direct method, and and direct method is kind of what you learn in school. Most of these standardized questions have like an alternate way of doing it. Um, in this problem, it's actually better to combine. The, new, the denominators 4k, 5k, and 2k into uh, what's called the least common multiple or uh, 20k. Um, can you see where I got 20k out of these three or is that is that unclear? That is unclear. That is unclear. Okay, let's do a different problem here. This is, I want to just, I'm, and I'm just kind of gauging where you're at at the moment um, in terms of like understanding and knowledge on this. So here's another question I want you to look at. And these are, these are questions that I develop here. So we, we're gonna have plenty to choose from um, if, we wanna, if we wanna work more on this. But it says, if x minus nine equals minus two y and y divided by three equals two, what is the value of x minus y? Okay, so you're given, you're given two equations, equation one and equation two. Can you solve for either either can you solve either equation for a variable? Does anything stand out to you, pop out 
to you at this point. I'm going to be honest. It's been so long since I've done math. No. Okay. That's okay. That's why, that's why we're doing this. I, I'm trying to get a basic, like, you know, where are you at um, to, to be able to best help you here. Um, all right. So let's try a different question and uh, um, something else here. What I'm hoping is, is you're going to say, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. I know how to do this. How about, how about a question like this here? Yeah, I mean, I've seen them all, but it's just I, I haven't done anything for okay. a minute. So for any, a while. any, any idea how to start? Uh, this. Yes, this one you put five into x and three, you multiply it five by so five x minus fifteen equals ten x or plus five, okay. and then uh, what would you do from here? Subtract five over the ten x, so it'd be five x equals five x on the right side. Okay, and so it's a negative 20 equals 5x and yeah. Okay, and then keep going. So x equals negative 4. All right, good, good. So, okay, that's good. So let's try a uh, slightly uh, more difficult problem here. Um, so the, the, the diff, okay. So if we go back to this problem right here, let me go back to this one because I, it's really actually not any different than the one you just did, but it, it's, it, it appears to be more complicated, okay? Um, if I wrote over here on the, on the right, y divided by three equals two, and I asked you to solve for y, how would you do that? How would you undo this division by three? Multiply. Multiply, multiply both sides by three. So y equals six, okay? And then here's an equation with both x and y. And if you substitute in the value of y, okay, you get negative 12, and then you can solve for x. So x is negative 3. But the question doesn't want x or y. Sometimes it does, but it wants this. It wants x minus y. So x minus yeah. y is negative three minus six or minus nine. So in, in yeah. terms of difficulty, this one maybe appears to be more difficult than the previous one, but you, once you solve for the value, you're just plugging it back in, you're manipulating the equation. It's kind of the same set of skills. It's just packaged a little bit uh, differently. So this is a similar question. Let me, um, let me uh, see if, uh, if you could, let me see if you can work this one out on your own, please. Okay, so take about 60 seconds here and see if you can work this one out for me. I got it. What's your answer? Two. Two. Okay. So did you put three in for K? Yes. Okay. And then on the left side here to undo division by three, you multiply by three. Mm -hmm. So those cancel on the right side, you get nine. And I'm, I'm guessing somewhere we're different. Where, where are we different here? Yeah, I did do, I did do that. Different. What, what did you I do? Forgot, I forgot to multiply K by three. Okay, so you just you just canceled it out and then added well, so you're gonna add one here. So x is x is ten. 
<laughs> um, are you okay? <laughs> All right. It's okay. Um, you know, you ever see a, a, a someone who gets on the basketball court and hasn't played for a while? They, they just, it doesn't look right. <laughs> that, that's probably how you're feeling. Um, that's okay. I mean, the best thing is, is that you're trying here. And, and I want to just, add, we're just going to keep working at some problems here. I, I do see that there's some, some preliminary, you know, things to work on, but um, actually this one's too difficult for Russ right now. Um, so you're not taking any math. How are you doing in your other classes right now? Pretty good. I mean, I, good. I finished everything straight A's besides math. Okay. And have you always struggled in math or is it just, just recently? Uh, I think it was just algebra two that really got me. It really got you. I fell out of love with it. Okay. But did you, and did you like math before? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. All right. So here's a new, here's a new problem. It says in the equation above, what is the value of S when T equals minus one? So they're, they're giving you the value of T. So you've got to substitute that into this equation. Two S minus one equals 11. What is the first step to solve this equation? Do you undo the multiplication or the subtraction first? You, and you undo it and you get rid of it or undo it by adding. So you get two S equals 12, S equals six. Okay. So there's, there's definitely some problems here uh, that you can do. It's just maybe getting back into remembering how to do them. So let's look at another problem here. And you can maybe verbalize uh, some things from here. All right, so it says, for what value of h is 24 equal to h divided by 10 minus 6? We want, they're basically saying solve for h. OK, so there's division, subtraction. Which do you undo first? Subtraction. The subtraction, so you're going to add 6 to both sides. So 30 equals h divided by 10. How do you undo division in this problem? Multiplication. Multiply both sides by 10. What is the final answer? Uh, H equals 300. 300. Perfect. Okay. Good. Uh, so let me see if I can find another one here. Um, I've already done one like that. All right, here. I want you to try solving this one on your own, and then we'll move to some more difficult questions after this. Okay. So again, just take about 60 seconds here. See if you can now work this out on your own, please. I think I got the answer. Okay. What's your final answer for this one? Six. Say that one more time. Six. Is six? six. All right. So three times six divided by two plus four, does that equal 13? So three times six is 18 divided by two is nine. Nine plus four is 13. Good. Okay. So uh, on both uh, SAT and ACT, there's often a number of what are called story or word problems here. Um, before you answer this, what I would like you to do is, is uh, read it, and I want you to tell me in your own words like what it's actually asking for, what you're supposed to do. Yeah, this is the part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what I'm trying to have. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, but go ahead and just take, here, I'll read it. The formula D equals RT is used to calculate the distance an object travels over a period of time, T, at, which, at a constant rate R. Based on this formula, what is the rate R in terms of D and T? And if you need to read it again, please do. But I'd like you to try to tell me in your own words what it is actually asking you to do. What is the rate in which it's 
or of design. Um, wait, hold on one second, one second, one second. Before my idea. Okay, so basically it's just, it's, it's trying to figure out what is the rate of which it's traveling. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so here, this, and this is the nature of this exam is, is it, it's intended to sort of be deceptive. Um, this is actually just asking you to solve this equation for R. Okay, D equals RT. And it's, it's really, it's literally that simple, but there's a lot of words, yeah. you know, that go around it. Like sometimes, you know, your parents talk to you and they give you like, a big lecture on something i've done this myself and and you really just like as a kid i think you just want like just tell me what you want me to do and it's like solve for art but they don't do that in these exams they so one of the techniques and we'll talk about more of these if we continue to work together is you actually start by reading the last sentence first or the last clause um here because it sometimes tells you like what you're supposed to do you don't have to read all the other stuff okay now in terms of solving this for r what is keeping R from being by itself? This T and the math operation between them is multiplication. So if you divide both sides by T, R equals D divided by, by T. Any questions on that? No. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a really similar question and we're gonna do it the way I just talked about because this is, this is an important technique in terms of how to do well in this exam. We're going to read the last sentence first. Which equation correctly expresses H in terms of G, X, and Y? In other words, solve for H. Solve for H. There's your equation. Y equals square root H, G over X. And we want you to solve for H. Now, maybe you, you do or don't know how to do that. But what I want you to see is often if you go to the last question, you can you can kind of ignore some of the previous stuff. It's just extra, all right? So so any idea how to solve this equation for H? Any idea how to start it? Square. square both sides. Okay, so if you square and square, you get Y squared equals HG divided by X. And multiply X. Okay, so that's XY squared equals HG. And then divide by, or by G. What am I trying to do? We're solving for H, so you got to divide by G. Good. I, I just, I just, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You did did all the rest of it really well. All right. So the, that and that's the answer. Um, and so, like, here is another question I'll give you, um, which is it's the same style um, of question. All right, so this question again, let's go right to the last sentence question clause thing there at the end. It says, which equation correctly expresses X in terms of Y and Z? So which variable are we solving for? X. X. So I want you to give this a try solving for X for me, please. Take about 30 or take about 60 seconds and we'll see. I'll uh, check back with you. How are you doing on this one? Um, I think I got it, but I'm not 100%. Sure, so I'm gonna work through it here and you can uh, you can compare your work to mine. Uh, so the first thing is, is we're trying to solve for X. Notice I put parentheses in the numerator. We're gonna multiply both sides by two Y and that clears the denominator there. 
So it's 2yz equals x plus 3. You subtract 3 from both sides. You cannot combine the 3 with either of these because they're not like terms. So it just is left like, like this. Yeah, I got the same answer. Excellent. OK. So I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing that you're, you're slowly but surely uh, catching up uh, to, uh, to this. Let's try, let's try one more here of these, and then we'll move on to a different topic. Um, actually, that one's actually, so I, what I've not been doing is giving you the multiple choice. And, and there's a reason for that, which I'll, I'll get to maybe in another lesson. Uh, but let me, let me give you the multiple choice in this one. And I just want an A, B, C, or D as your final answer for this. Okay, I got the answer. All right, what is your final answer? A. Say that one more time, I didn't hear you. A. A, letter A, is that is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, and that is correct. All right, very good. Okay, so let's move on to a new topic here. Uh, so here is the new topic, it's functions, things like that. Um, this one says, what is the value of K of one? So what this means, and if you haven't seen this in a while, is you, you have to put in one for both both positions of x. Okay, now um, that's pretty straightforward. It's three times one minus five, two times one plus three. Now my preference is to put that one or whatever you're substituting in in parentheses. It's really important when it's a negative number. So order of operations, you, you deal with the top, you deal with the bottom. Three times one is three, minus five is minus two. Two times one is two plus three is five. Final answer of minus two fifths, okay? So what I want you to do, I'm gonna give you a slightly different problem here. I want you to do K of negative one this time. Yeah. I want you to give me the value of K of negative one, please. Do you have a final answer for me? Uh, if you could just speak up a little bit more or get a little closer to whatever it is, that, uh, that's OK. Uh, sometimes it's very clear, and then other times it's very muffled. Is that better? Yes. Do you have a, do you have a final answer for me? Uh, one second. I OK. See. Whenever you got it, let me know. Is it two over negative five? Two over negative five. So uh, the negative would go in the numerator. Let's just say this is the right answer. And that's a, just a preference. It's, it's yours isn't wrong, but the answer would be presented like this, or it would be presented with the negative in front of the fraction bar. But let me, let me go ahead and, and work this out just in case. Uh, so three times minus one minus five, that's in the numerator. Two times minus one plus three. 
So the first thing is, is, is you're gonna multiply these two numbers together, three and minus one, that's minus three minus five over minus two plus three. So I'm getting, I'm seeing something very different here. Uh, did you did you get either of these numbers in your fraction minus three and minus two? It should be negative eight. My fault. Ne negative eight in the numerator, one in the denominator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So a chance to redeem yourself here. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's look at another problem here. Um, actually, before we do that, this is probably more math than you've done in a while. What is minus one to the power of two? Can you tell me that? One, right? It's positive one. And how about minus one to the power of three? Should be one, right? Negative one. Now let's look at let, let's look at that. Why is that? Because it's negative one times negative one times negative one. Good. Negative negative one times negative one is positive one. Can I see how that becomes positive one? And then negative times a positive is a is a negative. But negative one to the fourth is back to being one. We can look at that over here on the right. Negative one times negative one, negative one times negative one. There's four of them, so that's why I wrote four here of them. This is this first grouping is becomes positive one. The second grouping becomes positive one, so it's positive one. Negative one to the fifth is negative one. And you're probably noticing a pattern here. They, they alternate. Do you see that? I do. Okay, so what is the pattern? Well, in summary, it's if it's negative one to the to an even power, this is always one. If it's negative one to the odd power, it is negative one. So this is something you'd want to formalize and, and put down uh, in memory if you can. Um, definitely will help here. Now, the, unfortunately, like there's there's more than this. Um, so, what you've got to be careful of, and this is this kind of an aside here, is negative one squared equal to negative one squared. I said exactly the same thing, but in terms of what I wrote on the on the left here, it's negative one times negative one, but on the right, it's negative one times one. Is this familiar to you or is this not familiar? This is familiar. Okay, so on the left it's one, but on the right it's negative one. So these parentheses really matter. Whereas on the whereas on the right, what you're squaring is the one and then the negative just comes along with it. Okay, so let's look at a problem like this one. I'll actually work it out with you um, for the first one, just to see, uh, so you can see an example here. So again, this is another standardized test question. There is multiple choice, but we're going to exclude that. They give you a function. They, they ask for f of negative 1. They, they say, put negative 1 in for x. So in this first position, and this is why I recommend always substituting in parentheses, it's negative 1 all to the power of 2. OK, so this is going to become positive 1 when we evaluate it. Same thing down here, OK? So if you do this, it takes a little longer because you're, you're obviously putting parentheses every time, but it, it will help shore up you know, some of these issues. So negative one to the power of two is one. Six times minus one is minus six, but then you negate again, so it becomes plus six, plus three. On the bottom, you can drop the parentheses because there's no operator here on the left side. So it just becomes minus one, minus one. Okay, and one plus six plus three. What is the bottom? What is minus one, minus one? It'd just be one, right? So it's like it's more like the, we'll do. We'll use a real life example. Um, you uh, you owe a friend a dollar, and then you borrow another dollar from them. How much do you owe them now? Uh, you owe another dollar. Another you, dollar. Two two dollars. You owe to, you 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 owe them a dollar, and then you're like, hey, can you give me another dollar? Want to buy a soda or bottle of water or something? You now owe them two dollars. So minus one minus one is minus two. That doesn't seem to be clear from just, just listening to you. Um, Elijah, are you still there with me? I am. I am. Okay. Okay. Yeah. T uh, talk talk me through what you're what you're thinking. I, I can't see you, so I can only, you know, sort of read your verbal body language. Um, is this unclear? And if well, so, now I mean so like like if I were to ask you what is minus three minus four, um, what would you tell me? 
Negative seven. Okay, good. All right. So in the numerator, one plus six plus three is 10. 10 divided by negative two is negative five. All right. So let me have you try a new problem here. I'm going to give you a function. If g of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 3, what is g of negative 1? Please, please uh, try that for me. I'll check back in about 60 seconds or one minute. I think I got the answer. All right, what is your final answer? Uh, negative seven. Negative seven, all right. So G of negative one means to put negative one in for X. I'm gonna put it in parentheses, minus four times minus one, minus three. So minus one squared is one. Minus four times minus one is positive four, minus three. So you, you've you got a different sign situation than I do here. What what so what so did you come up with? Um, I did put it in parentheses uh, that. Yeah, so you know you play basketball at a high level, I believe. Um, you're playing in high school, is that right? Some travel teams, maybe. Yeah. I mean, so sometimes your coach is like, "You got to do this," and you're like, "I don't really want to do it, right?" But you got to do it. Like, this is one of those things like you you need to do because it's going to help you avoid these problems. And uh, I can only say, "Hey, please do this. Please do this." Strongly recommend it. All right. So that it results in some sign errors. Uh, five minus three is positive two. Um, so let's try another one here. Do another one here. Let's go, uh, let's say f of x equals x squared minus one over x plus two, okay? And I want you to find f of minus one for me, please. So give yourself another chance here. Okay, I think I have the answer. What is your final answer? Uh, maybe negative two. Okay, you seem very uncertain. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's take a look here. So f of negative one is parentheses negative one squared minus one over minus one plus two. Okay, and if you didn't write this way again, I'll recommend that. What is minus one to the power of two? What is minus one times minus one? One. One, minus one, minus Zero. one plus. So zero in the numerator, the bottom is one. What is zero divided by one? Can you tell me that? Zero. It is zero, yeah. The only problem exists when you have zero on the bottom. Zero on top is fine. Uh, division okay. is a sharing problem. You just have nothing to share. Okay, so um, definitely you know, we would wanna work on this a bit more, but I'm gonna transition to some topics in geometry. Did, did you like geometry? Do you remember uh geometry? I finished with an A plus. So. Okay, it's it's very different. It's it's a diversion um, from from sort of algebra to algebra two, algebra one to algebra two. This this weird diversion, but um, 
here's a very kind of like, a, we'll say an easier type of geometry problem that you might see on the SAT, ACT. Um, do you have any idea how to attack this problem or what to do to be able to complete it? At all sides, right? So we want the area. Oh, then uh, it's like, there, there was a, a formula. I don't remember it. Okay. <laughs> there is a formula for a trapezoid, but you don't need that here. Because if you were to cut this, okay, well, now what do you see? This, uh, a square and a triangle. And a, a triangle. You probably know this, the formula for a square. Maybe. Yeah, multiple by one side by the other. Okay, so four times four plus, how do you get this length here for the base of the triangle? Well, you'd subtract four from seven because it'd be three. Okay. What's the height of the triangle? Four. Okay. What's the formula for the area of a triangle? I don't remember. Okay. So a triangle is half a square, half a rectangle. So it's base times height, but it's always half. So you just cut it in half. All right. Okay. So it's because you can see if we were to extend this, it would be a full base times height problem, but a triangle is always half. Okay. There's actually a really interesting thing on social media where someone was actually arguing whether a diagonal cut versus a half cut, um, they produce the same area. But, you know, it's just anyway. So one and a half, uh, four times three, you can switch the order here. Uh, so you got 16 plus four times three is 12. Half of 12 is six. So final answer is 22. Okay, now I want to bring up another important uh, sort of test prep idea here. I'm going to actually show you the same question. And I think this is what you were about to do. So I think when you looked at this question, you said, oh, I got it. Four plus four plus seven plus five. That's 20. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, a, that's So if you want to know why 20 is here as letter A, it's because the person who made this question knows that some number of students are going to do this. And, and so I call this I call A the most common wrong answer. And, and what I mean by that is, is that often A is an intermediate step or it's, it's the one that you're not supposed to do. So whenever you get A as an answer, this is a test taking strategy. You really wanna ask yourself, is it, is it really A or is it A because that's the first thing that came to mind to do here? And, and I, I don't want you to overthink these things, but these tests are not necessarily about your ability to do, to do math. They're more about your ability to um, kind of like decipher whatever they're giving you. Um, so let's, uh, let's look at another problem here. They do give you formulas for these in the book, but by the time you get to the problem or in the, in the test, by the time you get to the problem, sometimes uh, you don't even know where, where to look for them. Uh, so here, let's... Uh, Let's look at another problem here. Um, this one appears to be very difficult, but it's it's kind of like the first story problem we did. We should go right to the thing that it's asking for. It says, what is the length in meters of line segment AE? So there's AE, that's what we want right there. Mm -hmm. okay. It says A, and now we, now we go back. I'm sorry, well, we better get some information. It says A, B, C, D is a parallelogram and E, E, what are, is that? E, B, F, D is a square. And the area of A, B, C, D is 112 square meters. The area of E, B, F, D is 64 meters squared. So the one we care about here is this one right here, 64 meters squared, that's, that's this one right in here. All right, since it's a square, what is the length of each side if the total is 64 meters squared? Eight. Eight, so we got eight and eight, but that's not the answer we're looking for. Now, what, where it's confusing is it tells you the whole area, the whole area of, of A, B, C, D, the whole thing is 112, all right? So that means if you were to take this triangle on the, on the left, and move it over here to the right, the whole thing would be uh, 112, but you've got to take out that 64 because we because we really want that remaining area. So that remaining hatched out area looks like it's uh, what, 58? Does that look right? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't seem right. There's something, the area of A, B, C, D. Okay. So, okay, let me, and actually this is actually an unnecessary step. So the formula for a 
parallelogram is base times height. Base times height right here. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's a couple of ways we can do it. Um, I guess we will go back to that. So 112 minus 64. Uh, I don't, this number isn't right to me. 58. One second. It's 48. Sorry. That, that, Cause that 48 would definitely would no way work. So they're saying the, the area of these two triangles is 48. Okay. And we know the height is eight. So that means the base is six because six times eight gets you to, to, to 48. Um, so this is kind of a deceptive question where it's really not that difficult. You just have to um, kind of kind of reason it together. Uh, this time it is A, and it actually is A because we worked through it. Uh, so just keep that in mind here. Um, all right, so let me go back. Have you had a statistics class? No. All right. So the, the SAT ACT has moved a little bit more towards questions where uh, you don't actually have to calculate statistics, but they, 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 they're throwing it in now where you, you have to sort of like look at some data sets and, and make, make some decisions about it. Okay. Uh, so there's a couple of things that you need to know. Have you seen the word mean or average before? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me your own words, what they are? That's okay. If you can't just. So just if I score 10 points in the next game, it would be 15. <laughs> okay, so the, the, that's exactly right. So in terms of like data set A, we would add up all the numbers though, and we would divide by the number of numbers. Okay, so this is like, this is like the fouls, maybe fouls is a bad example, fouls in data set B, you know, in, by game, you do that. Maybe A is uh, blocks, block shots. Okay, so we would add those up and, and divide by the number of games. All right. How about the word median? Have you heard that before? Yes. It's like the and middle. Yeah, it's the middle. So what's interesting is, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four is the middle number. Right. And there's three on each side. But let me do this. Let me extend data set B to uh, another number here, four. Now there's eight numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's actually two middle numbers this time. Two and three. Two and three. So you actually take the average when there's two middle numbers. That occurs when you have an even, even number of numbers in your data set. How about range? Have you heard that before? Yes, but I don't remember what it is. So range is the max minus the min. So the max is the biggest number in the data set. The min is the smallest and you just subtract them. All right. Uh, see here okay is uh is is your either your mom or your dad around uh for or maybe your dad because he's someone said lesson is he around to give him some feedback on today's lesson i can go get my mom real quick she was in here like most of the time. okay so yeah why don't you do that and uh give, give her some feedback all right i'll be right back you want me to bring her in here if she's available if she's not i can i can call or text them at a later time i'll bring her one second 